Hi, this is your host Sabin Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR. Let's talk here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Valencia, Spain. And today we have with us Tom Lin, VP of Marketing at Casten by Veeam. Tom, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. We have been covering Casten for a very long time before the whole acquisition happened. But the market has also changed, you know, um, and things are changing when it comes to you know, security, data protection, high availability and all those things. And that's what we are going to talk about. But before, of course, we are here at KubeCon. Uh, it's day two, day three. I, don't, I have no idea which day we are in. <laughs> <laughs> Only I know is that tomorrow will be the last day when we wrap and leave. Uh, so share with us, you know, what kind of energy, what has been your experience so far? So uh, l let's call it Thursday. Then we don't have to be confused with <laughs> day one or two. Um, and, and typically, uh, KubeCon, the show, starts a little bit later in the week. Uh, so we're officially on day two of the show right now, but there's been a lot of meetings. We also run uh, CNDM day with uh, with Kasten, uh, our community event, and that was before the actual uh, show started. I think they call it day zero uh, to make things even more complicated. So uh, my experience is that uh, it's finally growing again. We were all super excited to go to uh, KubeCon in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, we were all very happy to meet people again. But uh, quite frankly, to use it with maybe uh, not such a nice word, we called it a vendor fest. It was vendors amongst each other. So customers were not showing up all that much. Um, but you know, everybody was excited uh, after um, lockdowns and whatnot to, to, to back, be face to face. What we're experiencing right now is, is customers are on the floor and that's awesome. Uh, we are seeing customers come up to us asking us for solutions to their Kubernetes challenges. Uh, so that's really great. We've been having great conversations. Our sales team, we have a huge sales team here. Uh, they're super excited getting great feedback about the level of conversations that they're getting. So um, I think gradually we'll, we'll be get we'll be getting back to uh, businesses as, as usual. Um, and and that's that's very good for, for the whole industry, I think. Interestingly, I think even during pandemic, the businesses, they grew because the, the adoption of cloud native did not shrink. It's only, you know, that in-person interaction. And that also leads to a lot of business as well. Absolutely. I mean, Kasten got acquired during the pandemic. I mean, kudos to the guys to make that happen without being able to meet any uh, anyone face to face or Practically not. So uh, it, it is actually uh, surprising how uh, how well um, the 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 market kept growing, sp specifically tech market, and maybe also thanks to the pandemic, right? Uh, I mean, think of companies like Zoom that did amazing um, back in those days, but. We're still looking at an emerging market, right? So the market was growing uh, during pandemic. Obviously, Kubernetes has been growing for the past four or five years, uh, gradually. Um, I always like to, to do a Google Trends search and, and, and compare uh, Kubernetes to, to VMware back in back in the years. And when you do that, you, you should do it back home when you're watching this video. When, when you do that search and you go back in time as long as you can, when the service started, you will clearly see that the, the VMware uh, adoption curve, it, it, it's really the traditional shape. And that is just based on how much search uh, there was online. And then if you compare that to the one from Kubernetes, you clearly see that the graph is going up but it's no way up there like where we expect it to get, right? So there is growth, there is good growth, there is, I mean, all indicators are there to say the market, I mean, people are adopting it. But the way how I see it is, and I always like to compare how I use technology because I'm just a marketing guy, but back in the days uh, when VMware was coming up, I was switching from, from Windows to Mac. I needed to run something on, on Windows in my Mac. So I was like, okay, let's run it in a VM. I downloaded, I think it was VirtualBox back then, downloaded it, installed Windows, and I was running. I didn't even have to look at a YouTube or anything. It was just all straightforward. That's how easy it was to adopt VMs. Learning Kubernetes is a different game, right? To the point where I'm like, maybe it's not for marketing people. You need to be a little bit more uh, advanced than where I am at. And But that is also for, for engineers and DevOps people and everybody who sees the vision of, okay, this is where the market is going. That is where the more innovative and scalable applications are being built. Um, so it's just taking a little bit longer than the shift from a physical machine to a virtual machine, uh, which creates a lot of, a lot of opportunities because um, when, after my first KubeCon, which was a virtual one a year ago, uh, my team and I we got together and we're like, okay, what did we learn, right? And we're like, okay, a lot of people are interested in what we're doing. A lot of people wanted to talk to us, but a lot of people are still learning what Kubernetes is. 
that was one thing. The other thing that we saw is to, to, to get used to our product, um, we, we, ha we have a free version because that, that's standard in the industry right now, but we also have a, a lab-based version where people do not have to build their own infrastructure. We do it for them and it's a controlled environment. And what we learned was that it's still a lot easier to make people use the lab then download the free version to run it on their own cluster. Why is that? Because they don't have their clusters yet. They're still playing with it. Um, and that is when we decided, okay, a lot of people, the market is growing, a lot of people learning, people don't have their own clusters yet. Let's build a hands-on learning experience for those folks. And then in just a few months, uh, my amazing team, uh, they put together uh, what's called learning.castan.io. Uh, we launched it at the next KubeCon, which was the previous one, the one in, uh, in LA. And I think today we are beyond 10,000 users. Um, I was actually pinged this morning uh, by uh, my lead from the digital team. And she was like, my God, the labs are going crazy. So many people are taking the labs. It's, it's, it's crazy. Should we do something about it? I was like, no, keep it going. It, it's costing us some money, but really helping the community to, uh, to, to learn Kubernetes eventually will pay back because once everybody's on the level, they will start building their applications and then they will, re will realize that they need backup solutions that were built for um, in, in, in a Kubernetes native way. And that's what we at Kasten do. Yeah, and that is a perfect segue to my next question, which is, you know, uh, you're talking about the adoption of Kubernetes. Early days, Kubernetes was more or less like stateless. Now it is stateful, yes. and that's where we start talking about data and yes. data production. So first of all, uh, can you tell me you now how different is data production in the Kubernetes cloud view versus the traditional IT world? Because the way we deploy and we do things is quite different, or it could be similar as well from traditional IT, which also means that there are a lot of vendors who come from the legacy word and yeah. then there are a lot of vendors who were born in cloud native world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so very good question. And uh, maybe first to the uh, stateless stateful uh, thing. When I first joined Kasten, um, I was talking to some guy to get educated what this market was about. And, and, and he told me it doesn't make sense what, what you guys are doing because Kubernetes is not me meant for, for, for stateful applications. You're meant to be able to lose the data. And I got a little bit worried, talked to the founders of, of Kasten and they're like, no, 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 he's got it wrong because Kubernetes is being used and will more and more be used by people with, with, with stateful applications. Um, actually, what I'm hearing from our uh, salespeople, especially pre-sales people, is that a lot of companies don't even realize that they're not stateless. That they're often like, oh, I don't need backup because I'm stateless. And then once they start asking questions, yeah, but you, you run um, Postgres or you run Cassandra or you run this, right? That's not oh, okay, so I guess I'm not stateless. And then they realize that they actually need to back up uh, the data that is in those databases. Even if, it, if that is just data to run the application, uh, they still need to back it up because they risk losing it, right? And then the other uh, misperception, uh, and that probably gets in, in, into the second part of, uh, of, of your question, is a lot of folks think we're using Kubernetes, so Kubernetes provides data protection and, and, and everything. We're cool, we're covered, but you're not. It's, it's really, you need to make sure that your entire architecture, including your application, all of the, comp uh, all of the containers, all of the secrets, the, the, the user management, and your application data, all of that needs to be protected. And um, I'm not the most technical guy, as I told you, but in the old days, it was fairly simple. You had a few servers that you needed to back up. Uh, there was a conversation between agent or agentless, and, and Veeam can say a lot of smart things about that because they got that right back in the days. Uh, but now with containers, it's really, um, you have pretty complex, because of the scalability that we need to see these days, you have pretty complex architectures very often with Kubernetes applications that need to be backed up A to Z, uh, including databases, including secrets, including um, all of that uh, application data. And that is where a Kubernetes native backup solution like Cast and Ketan by Veeam uh, comes in really handy because what the solution does, it, it discovers your application uh, you don't have to manually say, include this and that and that. No, our solution will say, okay, this is what your application consists of. 
we'll back it up. And then it's just up to you to decide what kind of policies you want, whether you just want to be uh, able to restore a backup, whether you want it to be offsite, whether you want it, uh, whether you want to use the functionality uh, to actually move from, from sandbox into production or from one cloud to another. So um, the essence is that Cast and K10 is really a data management solution, uh, but because people kind of, uh, get a little bit, uh, they get the deer in the headlight a little bit when you talk about data management for Kubernetes. We, we try to keep it simple and focus on the key use case where most of our customers are using us for uh, in these early days, and that is just the backup. Like, okay, to assist your application, we store a backup, a snapshot, uh, and, and, and then if you were to need it, we can restore it. But then, of course, there's all the other use cases, mobility, migration, um, disaster recovery, so we support all of that as well. Right. And you, once again, as you said, you know, when people move to Kubernetes, they think, and uh, just go a bit on top of that, that when people move to cloud, they think that cloud will solve all their problem. You know, you move to cloud, yes, cloud offers scalability, elasticity, flexibility, access, mm -hmm. but you know, it doesn't solve all the problem. You still have to, and people just think, no, I move to cloud and it's all taken care of. And you said, oh, I'm stateless. I don't have to worry about that. Then you're like, no, you do have it. <laughs> exactly. So, so um, from the awareness point of view, from, as you earlier also mentioned, you know, the lab, the, the, the kind of interest that is growing, which also means that people, there is an awareness about data protection in the cloud because the workloads are maturing, people are running pro protection. So, I mean, open source solve day one problem. You know, day two problem is where you have to actually manage, update, maintain. Data protection comes after that, you know, because you don't know, the, the, when something goes wrong, it's not about if, it was when, mm -hmm. and it's not even when it went wrong, when you got to know something went wrong, because it already happened. So, so first of all, talk about how much awareness you have seen mm -hmm. about your product, which will also help, you know. Yeah. And then we'll also talk about what is Kasten doing, because you are seeing the trends are changing, uh, the adoption is changing. You did mention that you're looking only at a specific use case, but I'm pretty sure in six months from now, one year from now, uh, you folks will evolve as well there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, I like to compare, um, selling a backup solution or data management solution, but with a focus on backup to uh, selling um, uh, insurance policies. Like when, when, when you build a house, you're not gonna get a, um, uh, an insurance in case it burns down before you start building it, right? Your first concern is I need to buy land and then I need to find a contractor to actually build a house and I need bricks and doors and windows and everything. And it's when you're about ready to, to move in that you're gonna think, oh, but what if it burns down, right? And then you t call an insurance company and you say, hey, I have a house here, I'm gonna move in. I wanna be insured in, ca uh, in case it burns down. That's how it works with, with backup as well. When, when folks are building new applications, backup is not the first thing on their mind. The first thing on their mind is where are we gonna run it, right? Or who's gonna build it? And, and then they start building the application. And, and then typically at the point where they're in a the sandbox and, and they have a pretty good idea of how it, how it runs and, and, and when they're gonna be deploying it, then someone raises the flag and says, oh, but we're probably gonna have to back up the data as well. That is what we're seeing with Kubernetes. Um, but on top of that, they first need to learn it. So a lot of folks are even the, the pre-sandbox uh, period. Um, but what we're really seeing, and that is probably circular, <laughs> that goes back to, to, to being here uh, at the show um, back in November, and definitely last year for the virtual one, we had a lot of conversations that were just like, what is Kubernetes? We had to tell people what Kubernetes is. Uh, just this morning, I, ha I had a couple of uh, gentlemen from, uh, from Israel walk on, uh, onto the booth and their question was not, what is Kubernetes? Their question was, how do you, compare, how do you guys compare to uh, an open source solution uh, th that they were uh, looking at back then? So um, people really know what Kubernetes are, uh, is. Uh, a lot of them, I mean, I, I like to look at it as a pyramid and there is a lot of folks still learning, but it's evolving and there is a lot of sandbox people right now and there's a whole lot of people that are actually running Kubernetes in production as well um, and that need a, a proper solution for that. Will it be wrong, like, if you look at the cloud native world at one point, you know, security was someone else's problem, but now with the shift left movement, security is something which is priority. So do you think the same thing will also happen with data protection that, you know, when I go and buy a car, I don't install airbag after I bought the car. You know, the airbag, you know, uh, you know, it yeah, comes yeah. with that. Or if you're flying a plane, you don't get a parachute once you have taken off. Yeah. You, so do you think that the trend, the, the whole, 
culture will shift where the data protection will be baked in just the way security is being baked in from us. So we will sh see similar movement there as well. Yeah, and, 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 and a shift is probably the right word uh, because some folks tend to think like there is the legacy folks and then there is the DevOps folks, but it's not like the DevOps folks are falling from the sky or anything. There's a lot of legacy folks that are transitioning into, into DevOps, right? That, that is really what we're seeing. Um, but what we're also seeing is that whereas in, in, in more traditional environments, and we're seeing that, we get that example very well with Veeam, where uh, the Veeam salespeople, they have very specific personas who they like to talk to. There is the server administrators, there is the backup administrators, there is the storage administrators, and they know what conversations to have with each of those folks because they understand very well what each of those folks' challenges are. In our case, we are starting to define those new personas, right? Like the DevOps, it's not just like one DevOps persona, it's, it's still folks with more of a focus on actual engineering and then folks that are a little bit more on the operations side. And I think we're gonna see that evolve moving forward uh, still a little bit. But to your point, um, the, the element of data protection, data management uh, is part of that, it's no longer, they're not shifting it off like, okay, that's for the backup guys. No, the people that are designing, building, running the application, those are also the people that are concerned about not losing data or making sure that users of the application are not using the data. So that is really a shift that we're seeing exactly. Uh, and earlier we you're talking about the adoption is growing, but you know, is there any specific verticals that you are seeing adoption or you're focusing on? That's a really good question. Uh, and I'm getting that question a lot also from salespeople. Um, you always need enough data to, to be able to, to make those conclusions, I think. And at this point, because of how early we are um, in, in, in the adoption uh, cycle, um, it's a bit early to say more this vertical or that. I can tell you that we've got success uh, successes in, in financials. We have successes in automotive, um, gaming, um, a lot of application development, obviously. But I think um, it's too soon to say those are the specific ones. For me, the one common denominator, is, is, is that how we say it, is innovative applications. That is where we're seeing adoption. Folks are not at this point moving existing applications to Kubernetes. I mean, if something runs, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? So existing applications, and I think for quite some time, are going to continue to run on, on, on VMs. Uh, what we're seeing is people in AI, people who really need to scale out from a user's point of view, from a, a data capture point of view, scalability is key, but innovation, that is where we really see the adoption. And that was in the end what Kubernetes was made for. And then maybe finally, so um, we've, we've got a customer uh, success story that we're gonna announce next week. Unfortunately, I cannot share it here uh, yet, but uh, they are uh, in the uh, automotive industry. They actually do uh, enable uh, self-driving car uh, technology. Um, and they reached out to Veeam uh, because they're a big user of uh, Veeam VBR. And they said, look, we're shifting part of our uh, infrastructure to Kubernetes. Uh, and they said, at this point, we're 80-20. And we need a solution for, for the Kubernetes infrastructure. And Veeam said, well, glad you knocked on our door. We just acquired uh, Kasten. So they put the customer in touch with Kasten. And they just loved the fact that it was all coming from the same brand. And they loved the fact how the collaboration between the sales teams from Veeam and Kasten happened. And very short sales cycle, they tested the technology, they adopted it. And now it's really interesting to see how that customer is, is shifting their infrastructures. They told us clearly, they're never gonna move away from VMs. They will always have certain workloads that will be running on VMs because it's good enough, it's been working for years and it will continue to be working. But really the innovative applications that are building, that is what are shifting to Kubernetes and then what they're talking to the Kasten a branch of uh, Veeam 4. Tom, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course share with us you know, the whole evolution and of course the, the problem that Kasten is trying to solve, which is a unique problem, but it will become, you know, as we said, you know, it become a kind of with the shift left happening yeah. a norm. So thanks for sharing those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show and also to discuss all those new success stories that you folks are working on. Thank you for having me. This was a great conversation.